So Corey, if we think about 2020 has probably been the year of the retail trader. And I say 2020 because who keeps track of time anymore? I think that goes into 2021. So maybe like the, from lockdowns is like a full year. And so, you know, we've had this amazing um, bull run in retail traders, especially on call options, you know, going into GameStop. You know, what, what kind of data are you finding where retail traders are at today in, in April? You know, 2020 was definitely the year of the retail trader, all the stories. It seemed really like 2021 was maybe even going to be bigger, right? With the GameStop saga right out of the gate. It seemed like retail was in full control. As for me, I like the stock. But that does seem to have changed lately. Oh my goodness, guys. The retail investor stocks crash continues on. The big guys, man, they might not feel this, but trust me, the retail investors know what's going on right now. It does seem like we're starting to see retail traders maybe exiting the market. And there's a couple of trends here we can start to look at that might be evidence that this exodus is occurring. First would be call option volume. So we saw a huge ramp up in call option volume, in particular, sort of small lots of contracts, which is typically associated with retail traders. Huge ramp up in that type of volume in 2020. What's interesting is a lot of it seemed to coincide with stimulus checks as well. So there's a large expectation that this new round of stimulus checks might find its way into the market and in particular into call options. And we've seen just the opposite. There was a big peak in call option volume in about February. And ever since then, we've seen call option volume fall off pretty dramatically. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think uh, Ben Eifert at QVR is kind of taking the other side of that. I said, you know, the volume may be off its peak, but he believes that um, retail options traders are here to stay. I think there was also a, a really interesting um, interview on Bloomberg Odd Lots with the famed Australian short seller, John Hempton, where he's understandably apprehensive that retail has gone away. So he's still positioning accordingly. I think it peaked. I don't feel comfortable that that peak is permanent. And we're not going to manage the book on the basis that that peak is permanent. Right? You ask how it's changed, you know, hedge fund management. Well, you know, it's scared. Right? And I'm going to stay scared because I always do. But yeah, it has peaked. Whether that's a peak is permanent, I have no idea whatsoever. Gambling is fun, right? So I, it's always a possibility that people decide that gambling is fun again and do it on an even grander scale. I try, I try not to gamble. I try to work out how to manage my risks. But, you know, I've got to be aware that there are non-rational actors there whose, whose goal isn't to make money. Their goal is, well, maybe they tell you their goal is to make money and they hope to, but their goal is in fact just a gamble. Another thing that we've seen from a trend perspective is actual activity in retail brokerage accounts seems to be down about month over month in the most recent month, down by about 33%, which is again, a pretty substantial decrease in activity given the huge ramp up we saw in 2020. The third area I've been trying to keep my eye on is actually social media. So there's a big rise of, you know, fin talk influencers and, and Wall Street bets and Discord. Another big trend that seemed to occur in 2020 was financial YouTubers who previous to 2020 really didn't talk about stocks that much. It was mostly real estate and personal finance really seemed to move into talking a lot more about investing in the stock market and saw a huge explosion in their audience growth both in sort of total subscribers as well as viewership. And they've recently been commenting on the fact that those viewership numbers have been in a meaningful decline as of late. And by the way, I think I speak for all of us when, we, when I say all of our YouTube numbers has, have been down 30% at least. And if we actually track their numbers, if we go back and look at all their video viewerships, 
of some of the most popular YouTubers, we can actually see that that average viewership over the last month has been substantially lower than it was, say, in late Q4 2020. It's also interesting how, you know, viewership or, you know, potentially activity or, or volumes are really dependent on performance. So that's the other key piece to maybe 2021 and Q1 or going into tax season here. How is, you know, performance has not necessarily been keeping a pace of what it was looking like in 2020. Well, I think if these trends tell a story, right, it is that retail activity has somewhat abated. And so the question becomes why? And I think performance is maybe one of the reasons why. Entering into Q1 2020, we saw a huge ramp in retail stocks, uh, retail favorites at least, in Q4. In the first six weeks of the year, some of these baskets were up 20, 30, even 40%. Really astounding performance. We can look at something like ARC as a really good proxy here for some of these retail favorite names. I think ARC was up about 25% in the first six weeks of the year. And then subsequently sold off fairly dramatically. In the next couple of weeks, fell into about a 30 uh, to 35% drawdown. So there might be a lot of retail investors that are now sort of licking their wounds. They're, they're well underwater of that high water mark. Uh, they might owe some taxes. There might be some other things they want to spend their money on. And they might just be more reluctant. Another area we see this is actually with SPACs. So SPACs were another category that had really strong performance in Q4 2020, really strong performance out of the gate in Q1, and then have since just materially collapsed in their prices. And we can see a corresponding decline in retail participation in the SPAC space with that price decline. Uh, and again, correlation is never causation, but these two do seem to be somewhat linked. This is fine. I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. I'm not sure that uh, retail participation decline in SPACs is necessarily a bad thing moving forward. Um, you know, you brought up taxes. It made me think about the other day, Meb Faber and I were having a discussion on Real Vision about, you know, in the late 90s, both Meb and I were trading, you know, call options on tech and biotech firms on, on E-Trade. So there's nothing really new under the sun as far as uh, young people trying to, you know, basically make FU money and, and throw it in their parents' faces. But the best part of that too, though, is that, you know, that's how we learn about markets. So we may have washed out some of the retail traders, but maybe the ones that stick around really learn about their options Greeks. And this is their, their entry into the world of finance and investing. Um, but part of that, as, as probably Meb and I both had to learn as well, is uh, about the tax man and how the IRS handles a lot of your trades. And it's always a, a shock after you've made, you know, a bunch of money more than you thought you'd make to then that tax bill comes due April 15th. So what do you think about the tax situation? Well, taxes could be a big one here. And I think it's important to recognize that we had turn of the year and then there was a lot of negative performance. So investors who have been reinvesting those gains in 2020 may owe a very large tax bill. So for example, Goldman Sachs estimates that 2020 is set to have some of the largest realized gains on record. Now, this all sort of needs to be normalized for you know, absolute wealth levels. But I think the point here is that those investors who did really well last year probably have a big tax gain. And now all of a sudden in 2021, they might be sitting on a lot of losses, but those losses can't necessarily be used to offset their 2020 gains. So I wonder part of that too, is if we're talking about retail option volume, the other primarily place for retail to trade is, is, is in crypto as well. And sometimes, you know, you know, you use this call option volume to really try to, you know, explode your gains on the upside. And if, if we see markets get more choppy, then call options don't really have that explosivity that maybe those traders are used to. So they're looking, still looking for those 10 or 100 baggers. So they may be moving back to crypto and to altcoins, um, looking for those exponential returns. I think one of the interesting ideas here is maybe the stock market has lost its luster. Maybe call options have become too expensive. Investors are realizing the premium they're paying is now too high. And that money's moving out of the market and into crypto. So what did we see in Q1? Well, we saw account openings at Coinbase, I think were up over 100% in Q1. We saw a huge surge in the demand for leverage in crypto, in particular, uh, Bitcoin, 
again, that tends to be just people are wanting more and more and more exposure. Uh, and a lot of that in talking to people who operate in the crypto space say that's very frequently a sign of sort of a retail frenzy in crypto. Uh, and we even saw a big pickup in spot volume. So not just in sort of the, the leveraged perpetuals or futures, but in actual just volume in crypto itself, there was a big pickup. Now that's moderated a bit to in, in sort of the recent month, but it is still incredibly elevated compared to where it was you know, call it five or six months ago. So it's possible that a lot of this money has moved from the market into crypto. So if we start also thinking about outside the market, something that plagues my mind constantly is that less than one and a half percent of us actually grow the food and then are in the military that, that protect the land that that food's grown on. So if we think about the hierarchy of needs, that means that 88 and a half percent of us are really just entertaining each other. You know, we may think what we're doing is very important, but in a sense, it's just entertaining each other. So, you know, during the lockdown, you know, we didn't have sports, we didn't have sports gambling, we didn't have a lot of things going on, we didn't have a lot of forms of entertainment. So maybe that, you know, call option volume or, or retail trading options was a form of entertainment, crypto was a form of entertainment. As we start to open up these economies and every, everybody's able to go back outside, maybe go have a drink together, you know, maybe our, our forms of entertainment are changing and maybe we're seeing the just the initial inklings that things are changing as far as people finding different forms of entertainment. You know, what have you seen any data from like the real economy for travel and opening up? I think this is another really important part of the story potentially, which is a lot of things that maybe we weren't spending money on last year. A lot of people are looking forward to spending money on this year. One area we can look to the data is, and we're seeing it already, is in flights. Uh, TSA throughput numbers have certainly continued to be on an uptick and have jumped a little bit uh, after the holiday season. And we can also see it in polls where a lot of people are expecting, though they haven't bought their tickets yet, they are expecting to be buying tickets for both domestic and international air travel. And we can see that flight prices are already going up. So again, people might be taking their money out of the markets or the crypto markets or sort of this notional economy and moving it back into the real economy. And in doing so, that marginal dollar that used to be bidding stocks has disappeared and may no longer be supporting those sort of retail favorite names in the market. I'm thinking about in general, you know, as we're coming into tax season, you know, maybe this, you know, diminution of, of retail volume is maybe just due to tax season. The other way we could look at it is it's interesting prior to 2020, we never really talked about retail volume because it was a blip, but we also never saw retail uh, volume move in uh, concert with each other like we saw in GameStop. So I guess the real question is after everything we just laid out, you know, what are your personal beliefs? Like, do you think retail is here to stay and that we need to keep a close eye on it? Or is this part of the reopening effect that we're going to see retail continue to decline in volume? And this is just my opinion only, not supported by anything other than anecdotes. But I think retail is here to stay. I think when you create new means of access and easier access, you open up markets to a whole new set of participants. And a lot of those participants are going to stick around. I do think there was probably a surge in 2020 where people were stuck at home. A lot of people I've spoken to anecdotally lost their jobs and needed a way to make some income. Those people are now back to work. And yes, they're still dabbling in markets, but they're not tracking markets full time and they have another source of income. So they're not trading as actively. I think there will continue to be active retail participation. I think this sort of blob of money that's moving around in a coordinated fashion is something that most hedge funds, particularly those that have shorts on, will continue to be hyper aware of for the next two or three years. But do I see the retail mania that occurred in 2020 continuing in the latter half of 2021? I think reopening is going to abate a lot of that enthusiasm. I'm not sure if I can guess which way retail is going, but what it has made me think a lot about is like, the societal or cultural zeitgeist right now is through blockchain is the idea of reducing middlemen. And so I really wonder if like Gen Z is looking at this as in, I don't want these middlemen between my 401k or my IRA and going into indexes and supporting this, this Wall Street ecosystem. I would rather directly invest via my Robinhood app. 
and I'd rather choose the stocks I'm, I'm, I want to be part of. And that's part of ESG, right? Is this idea of more choice and the reduction of middlemen in between the process. So that's what I really wonder about is this, is this more of a, a cultural uh, phenomenon that could continue um, into the future where we're just trying to reduce the, the people in between what we really want? So the grand answer here, Jason, is, is we don't know. It seems like recent activity has declined, um, but it's still well above pre-COVID levels. This may be something here to stay and something that probably everyone should continue to be aware of. I mean, Wall Street needs a hero. This country needs a hero. Right there, TDCG. Now make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss one of these amazing episodes.